Hello. I'm Assemblyman Bob Riley, representing Colony, Clifton Park, and Half Moon in the State Assembly, and this is your program Assembly Update. Today I have a special guest with me. As you know, sometimes I'm interviewed, and once in a while I bring a guest in here. And what I have found very interesting, an issue, is that of rare diseases. And the problem when, uh, of rare diseases is that there's very little research money that goes into discovering cures for the diseases and treatments for those diseases. But today we're going to speak about a type of cancer that in fact is not a rare disease but uh, is still under the radar and funding for it is simply not uh, there. So this is a very common disease but yet it receives, it's neglected as many rare diseases are. And uh, our guest today is Lynn DiGregorio, uh, who in fact is very interested in this disease, and we'll ask her about that. And she in fact started a foundation to address this disease, the DiGregorio Family Foundation. Yes. Hi, Lynn. <coughs> Hi. Uh, tell us a little bit about the foundation. In other words, what is your invo what what disease are we speaking about first of all? We're talking about stomach cancer, we're talking about esophageal cancer. Okay. The um, foundation was set up um, I started in, in 04, but by the time we were incorporated uh, and so forth in New York, 06 was our official start date. And what made you start this foundation? We, my family has a personal history with stomach cancer. We have a rare type of the disease where it's hereditary. And I lost my grandmother, my father, um, two aunts, two uncles, four cousins, and most recently my sister passed away in 2004 from stomach cancer. Um, I started the foundation because when my sister got sick, she was diagnosed and there was really no hope for for her prognosis and when my father was diagnosed in 1976 it was like an instant replay and I thought okay. how, how could this be this is you know 30 years later and nothing is any different than it was when my father was sick is this a genetic disease this on is a genetic your father's side it came my, down yes. a gene? on my father's side um, I ended up doing family research on my family in Italy came from my grandmother who was actually from Spain and it's a 50-50 chance of passing on the gene and if you have the gene you have an 80 more than an 80 percent chance of actually getting stomach cancer. Now do you personally have the gene? I do not have the gene. My There was three siblings, um, my sister, my brother and myself. My brother and I were negative for the gene. So they um, can test for the gene. Now they can test for the gene. It wasn't in 2001. Um, there was a doctor, uh, Perry Guilford, in New Zealand, where apparently the Maori tribe in New, Ze New Zealand has a very high prevalence of this disease. And there, uh, they've had people die as young as, I think, 14 years old mm. from stomach cancer. So he actually did the work and discovered the gene that causes the stomach cancer that we get. But the majority, 95% of the stomach cancers are not hereditary. Now, if, if in fact uh, it was discovered that a person had the gene, are there some treatments or cures for this? The only treatment they have is removing somebody's stomach. Removing which, the entire stomach? Removing the entire stomach, not not like somebody that has, um, you know, the weight loss type. They take from your esophagus down to your intestines and remove everything. Now, uh, if in fact a person was discovered with this gene, would they immediately operate? Or there may be a chance you could have the gene and not contact con contract the yes. cancer, right? The recommendation when we went through before they would even test us. Um, we went through Sloan Kettering. They really want you to be intent on the fact that if you're positive, you'll move forward and have your stomach out. And if, you, if you have the gene, yeah, they recommend you have the having genes, your stomach out? Yeah, 
because there's no way to screen for what we have. Mm -hmm. If they do an endoscopy where they go down and they look in the stomach, you can actually have the stomach cancer that we have, but they don't see it. And by the time they do, it's usually too late. All right, so, um, well, that's a uh, pretty frightening thing to yes. live with for your entire family. Yes. So. Uh, but tell me now about what research comes on, because the way I introduced this program, I said there are certain diseases um, that, in fact, the amount of research is not adequate and is not the amount of research that is done on other uh, diseases. Well, I'm not sure why this is. Um, stomach cancer is actually the number two cancer killer killer in the world. A lot of times when you hear statistics, it's very confusing because mm -hmm. they're talking about the amount of people that actually have the disease or get diagnosed with the disease. Stomach cancer is the number two cancer killer in the world behind lung cancer. Um, it claims over a million lives a year. In the United States, stomach cancer, there's 25,000 cases of stomach cancer diagnosed each year. I believe it's 90% of those cases will not survive for five years. Actually, most don't survive for a year. Esophageal cancer takes 400,000 lives a year worldwide. And in the US, it's about 13,500. The funding for both cancers equals about $30 million from the NIH, mm -hmm. yet Pancreatic cancer, and I'm not putting down pancreatic cancer, takes 25,000, they get 25,000 diagnoses a year, and they get about $87 million a year. Brain cancer is about 10,000 lives a year, and they get, um, I want to say it's about 100 million a year, so there just seems to be a wide disparity in the funding. Now, when you speak about the stomach cancer, and uh esophageal cancer, you're not speaking uh, only of the type of cancer that is prevalent in your family no. with this gene. Correct. So there's all different types there's of There's all different stomach types cancer. of stomach cancer. And in uh, where the research is lacking is not only in this one type of cancer, but across the board for yes. all stomach cancers. Yes. Um, so what can be done about this? I guess you have to put one foot ahead of the other and I decided there's no public funding, there's really no private funding. I, the reason I started the foundation is I looked around for, for different foundations that may have funding for the disease and there was a handful that cropped up and they seemed to come and go. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to start a foundation. Um, I, my background, I work on, on Wall Street, so I probably have better access to, um, to raising money than maybe some other people do. So my brother and I thought, we're lucky we were negative for the gene. Mm -hmm. Stomach cancer and people that get it are not lucky, and there's still no funding. Let's see what we can do. And whatever we can do is better than nothing. Now, what have you done to date? We have started a stomach cancer registry at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, what is that now? They take all the people with stomach cancer who volunteer to be in the program and their family members and they gather data on, you know, um, family health information, um, lifestyle information. They actually take DNA. Um, so you, you, you and your brother were instrumental through the foundation of actually getting this register started? Yes, yes. That's wonderful. And okay. they're located, Sloan Kettering was able to get a grant to open up um, the registry at Queens Cancer Center, which um, doesn't cater to as affluent a crowd as Sloan Kettering does. Mm -hmm. So they have the two centers there. They opened up a center at University of Southern California, and we just um, awarded a grant to them to open up in Israel, Germany, Korea, and Nigeria. Who, who are we? Uh, the foundation. The foundation. Yes. Well, um, 
How much money has the foundation collected to date since uh, 2004? Uh, we've raised over between a million and a million and a half dollars you at this point. You are a very point. good fundraiser. <laughs> so this is this must be very much like a full-time job. Uh, mean, oh, you, no. You, <laughs> but you must spend a tremendous job. amount of time on it. No, you know, somebody had given me the advice when I started the foundation, have a good board, mm -hmm. and I have a very good board. Everybody has rolled up their sleeves and pitched in to help. Okay. Um, so that's been instrumental in how much progress I've made. And I have a very, very generous, um, my two bosses, um, Mike Mayer and Steve Smith of the Seaport Group, have been instrumental in, in the foundation getting up and running. And they've committed to support the foundation since its inception. All right. What other uh, activities, if any, have you has the foundation um, accomplished? We had um, one of our board members, Pat Armstrong, works on the New York Stock Exchange. We had a night on the floor where we had a cocktail party on the, the floor of the Stock Exchange. Um, mm. We actually rang the closing bell um, last December. Um, we had a, a team for the New York City Half Marathon. And okay. now we'll have a team for the New York Marathon. Are you a runner yourself? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so, but uh, so you'll have a number of people running, and they they'll go out. They go and out get, and raise uh, money. Yeah. They're sponsored yes. by a group of individuals, and then they run. So you have uh, collected quite a bit of money. Yes. And besides the registry, where else has that money gone, and for what purpose? We gave an award to Dana Farber. Um, to Dr. Um, Matthew Meyerson for esophageal cancer. Um, and he's halfway through his grant. And then come uh, September, or October rather, we'll collect applications to award another grant for January 2011. How we set up was we have a separate scientific advisory board where really the people on that board are the top scientists in stomach and esophageal cancer in the world. They're mm -hmm. not just from the U.S. And we take in grants, the scientists review the grants and rate them, score them actually. And apparently those with the lowest scores win. And that's how we, you know, the board, we decide how much money do we have and how much are we going to give out this year depending on how our fundraising goes. Well, I have a surprise for you. Our time is almost done. <laughs> it's that quick when <laughs> this subject is so um, interesting and so important. Um, what we want to do is just take our closing moments here and tell people where they might uh, reach the foundation because people want, what, what our purpose here is to make people more aware of this. But why don't you just tell uh, the people uh, how they could reach the foundation? You can go to our website, which is digregorio.org. And we'll put that on the screen. And you can also reach us um, by, by mail. Um, we have a post office box in okay. Pleasantville, New York. And we, we don't have to say that because we'll put that on the, uh, the screen also. Great. Lynn, thanks a lot for being here and uh, discussing this important uh, topic with us. And I just want to congratulate you and thank you for all your good work. It's been pretty amazing. A layperson really brings together all this research. So thank you for thank having Thank you me. for being here. Um, and thank you for uh, watching our program today. This is Assemblyman Bob Riley on our program Assembly Update. Thank you again for tuning in.